Okay. Uh, I am Bowen. I am uh, Dr. Samitha Sirithunga, National Program Manager, Injury Prevention, a consultant, community physician attached to Director of Non-Communicable Diseases of uh, Ministry of Health. Uh, as you said, uh, I was given the task to discuss about the Health Ministry perspective in uh, road safety, but uh, I would like to share some thoughts related to the uh, plan what we develop with the with the multi-sectoral organizations regarding the road safety and we finalized the almost all the the, the plan uh, very recently and uh, right uh, to go into move on to therefore I, my title i changed the big plan for road safety i uh, give you some idea about injuries 1.3 million it is a lead, leading cause of hospitalization in sri lanka but you know that uh, not only admitted uh, in, that is injuries not road traffic accidents uh, that is uh, not only people are admitted for treatment, but there are people, so many numbers of people are treated as outpatients and uh, some uh, some uh, people are treated at private sector, I would say, and some more, uh, a considerable amount in a number are treated at uh, their homes by their own uh, without going for medical uh, interventions, even though they are uh, needed to go for medical institutions for medical care. And uh, we have some estimates uh, develop uh, uh, with the current available some uh, uh, details, according to that, uh, one out of five individuals in Sri Lanka may need medical care due to injuries annually. Uh, that is a huge number. This is our national injury surveillance system uh, uh, that we started in 2017. It's gradually increased in the coverage. According to that, uh, uh, the leading mechanisms of injuries related to Sri Lankan hospitals, according to our injury surveillance uh, surveillance system, it is false. Transport accidents and uh, animal bites come un come under uh, come as the second and third. Transport accidents, uh, the the number of uh, percentage of transport accidents from the total injuries admitted to the hospitals. It's about 16 to 17 percent. About you, you can see that uh, falls are uh, it's about uh, 25 more than 25 percent. In 2020, there is a some reduction of road traffic accident uh, uh, the percentage because of the problem in the COVID situation because where uh, people are uh, the restricted movements of the people. It's so uh, then now uh, annual occurrence of injuries related deaths in Sri Lanka. Actually, we do not have a very good uh, database to get that uh, down this one. Anyhow, according to again, according to our uh, current knowledge, there may be 12,000 uh, injuries occurring the, uh, in, in Sri Lanka annually. And uh, of that, about 3,000, almost 3,000 in, uh, injury related deaths occur inside hospitals. That means before admission hospital, that means uh, on the spot admission and the before uh, uh, during the transport, there may be 9,000 deaths can occur in Sri Lanka, as, as in Sri Lanka annually. According to the uh, uh, recent uh, report uh, uh, published by WHO, they have estimated for Sri Lanka 11,700 deaths uh, uh, annually in uh, 20, uh, 2019. According to that, 32 deaths. It is not, um, again, I want to say that this is not road traffic accidents. It is total number of deaths, 32 deaths can occur daily. That means every three hours we lose at least three, pe uh, four people due to as a result of injuries. This is a huge number. This is these all are unnecessary. And most of the victims are belong to the economically productive age group. That is our 15 to 44, 50 year age group. That is we, we lose a, a considerable number of individuals due to accidents and road uh, accidents. And when we go to the, there is some data actually to, to see the burden of the injuries and also the road traffic accidents. And according to our injury surveillance system, we started in 2017. Again, it's uh, still the coverage is increasing. We don't, uh, we have not yet achieved 100% coverage, but in coming years, we can give you a better picture about the uh, whole injury pattern in Sri Lanka. Uh, based on this one, in in, in 2020 up to 2020, it is the the 2017 is a 2017 is a problem because we started in that year. But 29, 18, 19, 20, the the uh, the, the road traffic accidents is the number one cause of uh, mortality that deaths in Sri Lanka due to injuries. It's about uh, the average is about 28, 29 percent. Like you uh, you know that there are some uh, certain injuries. 
uh, can occur unintentionally and intentionally. Sometimes there are maybe suicides, homicides, and sometimes without actual accidents can occur. And uh, based on this one, according to 2020 uh, data, you can see uh, of all injuries, 65% of the deaths reported to injury surveillance system, uh, through our injury surveillance system, it is about unintentional injuries, but 35% is about uh, intentional injury. When we go to see these uh, transport injuries, almost all injuries, uh, uh, transport injury related deaths, uh, are due to uh, unintentional. That means are not transport injuries are not only road traffic, but we consider here both ro uh, tra road traffic and uh, rail track accidents also. And but uh, here, ninety-seven percent were due to in unintentional. Three percent, only three percent were due to homicide or su uh, suicide. And uh, burden of transport. But the, the, now we observed, we saw that the burden of uh, injuries about Sri Lanka. But I, we want to. Uh, give you some kind of aware, awareness about the, the burden of transport injuries. Actually, we have at the moment, we don't have very good uh, data system to show this one except the uh, Sri Lanka police data. I have done some uh, assumptions here also. Uh, uh, I have done some assumptions because IMMR, which reports data of patients admitted to, it is the best data that uh, uh, collect information related to uh, 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 in, uh, not only injuries, admi patients admitted to uh, hospitals. Uh, it does not specifically report transport injuries as it is. But national survey injury surveillance system started in 2017 reports transport injuries, both hospital admissions, OPD and deaths, and also trans, uh, transfers, uh, transfers also. It is the coverage is increasing. And therefore, uh, I have at the, for, for, for our purpose also, for our purpose, I have taken some average uh, considering 2018 and 2019 data because I have no, I didn't take 2020 data because it's a special year. Uh, for average, 17.4 percent is the total number of total number of injuries reported to uh, hospitals uh, admitted to hospitals. It's uh, uh, about 17 percent admitted due to uh, road traffic accidents. Road traffic accident deaths again, 2018-2019 uh, uh, data considering those things. And, uh, I, uh, I have taken an average as 29% of the total number of deaths reported in Sri Lanka due to injuries or due to uh, uh, transport accidents. This is the actual numbers really what we observed in past few years, 2017 as this is the uh, first year, but in, uh, it, it is increasing to, uh, the, 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 with the uh, increasing coverage we know that uh, in 2018, there were almost uh, 40,000 uh, injuries. This is a injuries, not the deaths. Uh, 2019, more than 25,000. It is uh, around 47,000 victims admitted for hospitals for tre uh, treatment, in more treatment. But 2020, it is not completed yet. It is provisional data. It is still about 36,000. That means you can see that that is an increasing trend of the, and also numbers are very, very high. This is only a portion of our, uh, our picture because uh, annually 1.3 individuals are admitted to Sri Lankan hospitals for injuries. But when we uh, take on that one as a fraction, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, from 2009 to, to, uh, to 2019, you can see the assumption. As I mentioned earlier, I have taken the average as 17.4. Uh, in 2019, around uh, this uh, approximate numbers, 160, uh, 160,000 people admitted for treatment of uh, road traffic injuries in Sri, for, uh, to Sri Lankan hospitals. But in uh, the other hand, in 2019, it, it has gone up to 217,000. It's a huge number. Therefore, uh, even in our even that even though we say that uh, the numbers are thousand uh, numbers from thousands. It is the, the actual picture may be uh, even high. Therefore, uh, we, we have to deal with 270, more than 200,000 uh, individuals uh, reported to uh, hospitals due to accidents. And also we projected that if the trend goes like this, what will happen in 2025? It may go up to 262,000. That means additionally, we have to, there, there may be 172,000 individuals will be admitted to Sri Lankan hospitals. Then do, can we do this one? Our hospitals, do our hospitals have the facilities to cater all the facilities means not only the equipments, not only the buildings, but also do we have 
uh, enough uh, uh, workforce to treat all these. Therefore, uh, we, one thing we have to decide whether we, we, we are waiting till it uh, uh, goes like this or are we going to, as uh, uh, earlier speakers clearly said, uh, their secretary clearly said, uh, that uh, we we need to uh, have a uh, 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 to lower down this uh, trend and also when consider the debts assumption annual injury because at still we don't have a very good database uh, to get down the, the actual debts uh, due to injuries assuming that it is it is around 12000 transport injuries it is average if it is 29% in 29 uh, 209 it, uh, it was uh, 4,000 plus, but in uh, uh, 2019, it has uh, assumed its approximate number, it could be 3,400. It could be right because according to Sri Lankan police data, 2018 and 2017, the numbers were more than 3,150 like that. But uh, we have to uh, uh, we have to be clear, clear about because this is not only considered only the road traffic accident, but this considers Trail track accident. If there were about three, 250 to 500 deaths occur annually due to rail track accident, therefore this number may be okay. Therefore, we are dealing with not hundred, but we are dealing with thousand unnecessary deaths and unnecessary admissions. If it goes like this, additionally another 1,200 uh, around more than 1,000 people we lose. Uh, annually, uh, sorry, uh, from 2019 to 2025, uh, we lose, we miss, we uh, uh, 1,000 to uh, more than 1,000 individuals due to road traffic accidents by 2020. Therefore, what we have to do then, uh, this is another interesting thing to uh, reduce one, that to, for each one of one uh, death due to any kind of injury, say for about uh, in, in this uh, this case, road traffic accident, there may be billions, millions of risky behaviors. Therefore, to pre when we are, if we are going to prevent one death, that means we are addressing hundred thousand millions of risky behaviors. This is that we don't have actual data. All the all these things are estimated for our uh, considered for our purposes because without uh, having this type of things, it is it is very difficult to go ahead because we need some kind of baseline. It may be right or wrong. Anyhow, uh, this is uh, the, the left side one in the screen is a model developed by Western countries based on their own data. They say that for each one fatality death, there may be 300,000 risky behaviors. According to national data, what we have obtained, what we at the, have at the moment, that uh, when we uh, take that 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 uh, that formula into this one, for one each one day, this is uh, transport uh, tra transport related uh, one day, there may be 2.5 million risky behaviors. That means if we are going to prevent one day, we are addressing 2.5 million individual behaviors. That means we change the in behaviors of 2.5 million. That is a very big achievement and it is not may, may not be a very easy task as we think. Therefore, it's a uh, we have to think it's a very broad way. Therefore, what we have to do, how do we address this uh, problem? Then we have before the occurrence of the things, we have to do something. And after the occurrence, uh, then we have to do something. After the occurrence means after the occurrence of accidents, we need to do some uh, uh, treatments and so on. That post-event care and pre-event care. Uh, therefore, uh, as uh, then now in as Ministry of Health, the, we see the burden of the injuries. We spend billions of the government of Sri Lanka spend billions of money for the treatment and the management of these. Not only pre treatment, but also what about rehabilitation, social care? What about the family problems? Then, uh, therefore, we see this picture. Therefore, as the national focal point for injury prevention in the health ministry, we decide the non-communicable disease unit has decided to uh, develop a multi-sectoral action plan for the management of not only transport injuries, but also uh, uh, for other identified injuries. 21, 20, uh, 2021 to 2025, even though this is the end of, uh, towards the end of March, it is, uh, we started this one, this activity a bit uh, earlier, but last year we couldn't do, do much because of this, uh, the global pro epidemic. 
anyhow we are planning to implement this one we have actually we have finalized most of the things uh, by now now it is they are to implement uh, in in this one we are considering only the unintentional linkages that they are predictable and they are preventable if we take safety precautions correctly and uh, our they say this is uh, the, the, uh, again we have set uh, uh, an objective what we are going to do what what is our objective in 2025 we are planning to uh, reduce 5% of unintentional injury related deaths as i mentioned earlier to reduce 5% of the deaths we, there are maybe we have to do a very big program we have to address lot of things we have to change uh, uh, behaviors of the millions of millions of millions of people and uh, if we do so and uh, here again assumptions uh, we, we we think that we assume that by 2025 also if the uh, if the total number of deaths occurring in in sri lanka due to injuries if it is 12000 uh, unintentional injuries related deaths it's uh, it's about 7200 by 2025 we could save 1080 lives uh, if we can adopt this uh, this thing but it is not a simple because we need to know for each and every activity what is the uh, what is the problem how many uh, people can be saved if we can this if we implement this one and so on and uh, but according to sustainable development goals uh, 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 according to the un uh, their target is to 50 percent uh, reduction of uh, uh, injuries and uh, deaths by 2030 but msap our national multi-sectoral action plan it is 10 percent in 2020 it's a 10, 40 percent uh, or 40 less than that uh, global uh, uh, un target because according to at the moment as i mentioned new uh, that it depends on so many things we need to know about the total number of uh, deaths and uh, fatal accidents could be alleviated by each and every activity but at the moment we don't have that much of a uh, good idea about that one this is i have taken from united kingdom in 2000 reported uh, reported in 2000, 2000 according to this one they have taken uh, considered so many activities say one new road safety engineering program it is not only one thing there may be a big it's a very big uh, program uh, include vehicle crash protection passive safety this is not a single thing there are so many things involved in that one therefore after doing all these things, combined effect of all measures, uh, all users, it is they could save only the casual reduction, only 35%. Therefore, even if we say that, uh, we, we may say that even though it is 5%, that, uh, in 10, uh, 10 years, if it is 10%, uh, we could save more, uh, we could reduce more than sometimes more than 10 percent it is okay sometimes 20 30 percent it's okay but our target we have kept after going through so many things after so many stakeholder meetings we set that target as 10 percent okay if prevented five percent of transport injury deaths deaths this is injury pyramid in 2020 what could be the what is the injury that could what would like the injury pyramid in, in, in sri lanka uh, for 165 these transport injuries 165 deaths that means we have we will change uh, 4.1 millions of risky behavior that we, means we have to address at least one fifth of the sri lankan we have to change the behaviors of one uh, one one fifth of the uh, population of sri lanka if the population is 20 million it is 21 plus now it may be 22 million uh, in 2025 anyhow we have to address uh, millions of uh, we have to change the millions of uh, behaviors in Sri Lanka. Therefore, it is not a. It's therefore without having a very good uh, action plan. Uh, therefore, uh, actually, it it may not be possible to, to uh, reduce this number by once uh, 2025. One, 165 uh, deaths reduced the by uh, 2025 means uh, for. Uh, 2021 30 deaths say 32 or 30 33 deaths in 2022 uh, 66 deaths. yes right uh, according to this one we have taken uh, we have considered so many injury types transport drowning house uh, home injuries uh, workplace injuries vulnerable age groups mean children and adults and also we have taken a sp specific uh, 
uh, uh, thing as post event care that is after uh, happening injuries what will have to do these are the main areas that we considered in the uh, multi-sectoral action plan under five strategies so five pillars advocacy partnership leadership health promotion and reduction post event care capacity building surveillance monitoring evaluation and research under these five categories we have developed so many things so we have identified many activities say for an example road say a transport accident i have no time to discuss each and every activity but i will give you a very very brief summary uh, related to this one health promotion and reduction it is the, uh, the 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 biggest portion of the this thing safe vehicles it is not only that it is standardization developing standards of vehicles and also the uh, garage maintenance and so many accreditation systems so many things are there as uh, our uh, secretary correctly said safe roads there are so many things we have to do uh, in, in promotion of say uh, the safety at roads and also safe speed so many things we have to do uh, so many activities have also been identified in the action plan uh, in in safe speed actually for each and i as i mentioned earlier there are there should be for each and every activity we need to identify how many uh, how many deaths can be alleviated or reduced by each and every activity but for the at the moment we don't have much experience or much uh, data related to sri lanka anyhow we we are planning uh, introducing all these and also uh, safe behavior of road users it include these are only a very few uh, mobile phone usage and uh, the safety equipment usage like helmets and seat belts. Uh, this is uh, safe uh, three wheels and uh, mobiles and also pedestrian behavior and also use of uh, prohibition of you know, prohibition or addressing al blood alcohol levels, uh, sleepy and fatigued uh, driving and also train accidents and also under and also law enforcement. Actually, this helps to uh, reduce the number of injuries not only for the occupants but also for the many most of the time because we know that most of the victims are pedestrians cyclists and motorcyclists therefore to reduce the injuries and the deaths uh, uh, occurring due to uh, occurring among those people also at post event care first aid because we know that post admission care means if a patient is admitted to the hospital hospital staff Take, uh, take care of those people and they take their maximum effort to treat all these. But if a patient is not transferred properly to the hospital, that is a problem. It, uh, therefore, we need very good uh, first aid program, pre-hospital care program, and also for post-admission care. And if, if those first aid and pre-hospital care uh, uh, activities are very good, then hospital staff, is, then, then, then the, we can improve the quality of the life of the victims and also prolong the life and reduce the disabilities and also the reduce the number of deaths uh, occurring due to accident. And also, uh, these are the only a very few, but in here advocacy, leadership, uh, leadership and uh, uh, partnership, even in child injury, uh, injury, um, 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 injury uh, prevention program, we included certain things, even in uh, adult injury prevention, we included certain things related to transport accidents. Therefore, uh, when if we think that if we can implement this one, it is okay, it is 10 to 20%. If somebody wants to uh, increase the numbers by up to 50%, they are made for, therefore we need to refocus, re, uh, read again this one. And I think if we can uh, address this, these issues as it is, as identified by multi-sectoral organizations, therefore if we, we can uh, reduce total numbers uh, by a considerable number, as I mentioned earlier. And also one thing for, to, for leadership and partnership, and uh, some uh, stakeholders do like to have a presidential task force separately for uh, road traffic accidents, but uh, some of the stakeholders do not like to have that type of thing because there are so many presidential task force uh, 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 we have at the moment. Therefore, as an injury prevention task force or uh, that is injury council uh, to address all the identified main injuries because uh, not only transport accidents as uh, 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 this is 
uh, drowning is the problem, occupational injuries are the problem, there are so many problems we observe. Therefore, if we can have a counseling law injury, uh, injury something task force under the president or uh, the excellency president or the excellency prime minister, that would be a better option because that uh, my belief, but some uh, uh, experts, they believe uh, it's okay, we'll see, we can do a lot. And also this is the last slide, I'm extremely sorry. I have been given only 10 minutes to uh, speak about this, but I have, I have taken more than 10, 15 minutes. I'm extremely sorry. Almost all injuries can be prevented if taken adequate precautions. With a small effort, most injuries can be prevented. And also most of the time, preventive measures are mostly inexpensive. Thank you very much. I must thank uh, President uh, uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association and also the chairperson of uh, Road Safety Subcommittee of SLMA for giving us uh, this uh, uh, chance uh, to deliver this presentation. Thank you very much.